Welcome to the Minor Student Athlete Feature. We have Marco Flores from the swimming team here this Swift Morning. And Marco, how things are going right now with yourself in uh, preparation for the upcoming season? I mean, as far as our team is concerned, we're going to have a full regular season. We're preparing ourselves as best we can. We're not having any breaks. Our coach is not giving us any easy time. Luckily, we've been probably one of the only teams in the division that hasn't tested anyone positive, and we've been able to like train without any interruptions, which has been great for us. And looking forward into the season, we're trying to like prepare ourselves as best as we can for both conference and nationals this year. Now, looking forward to this season, you obviously have seen what's on your roster this year. You've had some upgrades and all that as well. How do you feel about things with the team going into your first meet here this weekend? I mean, last year we graduated a lot of sprinters, and as many people say, we graduated a lot of talent. But I feel really confident in the talent that we're bringing in into the pool this year. We have very promising freshmen that are coming in in really great shape. Um, we also have a couple of transfer students that bring a lot of talent into the table. And a lot of the returners as well have maintained their shape, if not coming into like with better shape than they did last year. So it's looking really promising for us, and we have really high hopes for our performance this year. Let's step back last year for a moment here. Um, yeah. Looking back at the last year's camp meets and all that. You were in Ohio for the Division II Championships and had arrived at the pool on the second day of competition, and then the meet got canceled um, yeah. for, for the evening session and all that. Kind of what went through your mind when all that took place when you arrived and found out the meet was over right there? I mean, for us, it was really kind of a bummer because a lot of us had prepared ourselves, if not all of us, prepare ourselves for both conference and nationals. We built up our entire season for those two meets, so we're able to, like, we want to see results and we want to see where the fruits of our hard work lay out and what they're able to give us at the end of the season. And usually you only get to see that during nationals and conference. Nationals being a competition with all like a higher level of you know competition a higher level of athlete athleticism as well um it's really disappointing to not be able to like do your individual swims and see where you actually end up at the end of the season but uh i mean luckily for us we weren't seniors this wasn't our last season and it was really heartbreaking for a lot of swimmers to be able to see the other senior classes and see how their swimming careers would come down to an abrupt end like that but we're looking forward to it this year again, and hopefully it doesn't happen. Now, in your case, you had qualified for the evening session there in the um, two relays that night, and you were part of a 200 medley relay team that sent you to school the night before. So really it was a, a little disappointment, you know, seeing the meet stop at that point in time, and you really felt like you were really getting a good group swimming-wise. Yeah. Um, as far as our individual swims were concerned, I didn't get to swim my individual events. I only got a couple of relays off, and even then I couldn't swim the finals. And I felt like it was really promising. I, I had a really good chance of winning my individual event. I felt like it was really in the mix, if you want to call it, for the top three spots of that meet, including the relay. I was able to drop the fastest split for my you know, leg of the swim of the entire division for the country that year. And that was really promising for me, and it gave me a good idea of how I was going to be able to do in the individual event. And not being able to like do it and test my limits out was really disappointing for me. But like I said, I mean, it's just a step um, into our improvement, and sometimes things like this happen. The best thing that you can do is not let it uh, bring you down and keep moving forward. Now, after the season ended, obviously school was let out, you know, with the pandemic going on and all yeah. that, and went to an online system the rest of the year and all that. How did you personally, you know, work around matters with the pandemic um, as far as your training went and all that? Yeah. I mean, for me, it was a little bit different than most Americans because I don't reside in the United States. So I had to go back home and my country took things a little bit seriously, uh, a lot more serious than a lot of places in the U.S. might have. So we went into complete lockdown. That meant that I wasn't allowed to go outside of my house. So it meant no pool training. I wasn't even allowed to go outside for some you know, part of the entire summer. So I couldn't go out for jogging and just general conditioning. But I did as best I could with indoor, you know, training regimens. I tried to do calisthenics and everything else that I could do within my power. It's definitely been hard and I'm a little bit out of shape. But coming into the season right now, I am prepared to give it everything I have to get back into that prime, you know, racing shape that I was in last year. So you really had to spend a lot of this fall just trying to get caught up really in the pool more than anything else. You didn't have the opportunity to do that in yeah, Honduras. This has been really tough. Probably I could consider it the toughest start of any season that I've had in my entire life because it's been really mentally taxing knowing that I was in such good shape at the last, uh, you know, earlier this year during spring at the end of my season and then coming into this fall season 
out of shape and, you know, trying to like get back into the mix again, catching up with things. It's been really tough, but it's also motivating knowing that if I'm able to like overcome this challenge, I'll be a better swimmer and a lot stronger as well. Now, you're competing in a conference, obviously, that's very competitive. We have five of the top 11 teams in the country in the last poll last season mm -hmm. that come out of the GLBC. Um, obviously, having that caliber competition is going to bring the best out of yourself and your teammates as well. So kind of talk about it a little bit here about competing in this conference with the high level competition we do have. I mean, our conference, the GLBC, is widely considered the best conference in Division Two, if not one of the, the best conferences in the entire United States, both Division One and Division Two. You can really tell with the quality and, and how demanding this conference is because usually whenever you see the top swimmers for the conference, they're usually the top performance at nationals as well. And with the addition of Lindenwood into our conference, we are going to be seeing a huge jump in you know both talent and performance as far as meets go. So it's really exciting for us to be able to compete and have a lot of like sparring meets, if you want to call them that, and dual meets to be able to like test our limits and race the big talent, like big talent names in the division uh, way before nationals, because a lot of teams out of other, you know, conferences don't get to do that. They only get to see the real talent at the end of the season. And we get to see it all throughout the year and race against them and, you know, push yourselves towards the limit. But it's definitely an honor to be able to be part of such a competitive group in the division. Now, speaking of top competition, you also had the opportunity to compete on the international level. You um, took part in the FINA World Championship in South Korea in the summer 2019, the Pan American Games later that year in Peru. Talk about having those opportunities to compete internationally and note that you will be able to take from those experiences and bring them here to the collegiate level. I mean, definitely being able to perform in such high level of competition, you're able to see what the best of the best in the entire world is looking at. You're able to take away personally from them. If you have a chance, you get to walk up to them and ask them for tips, and which is something that I've been able to do gratefully. Um, and being able to compete in that level, it also helps, you know, put things down to size and be able to like perform a lot better in competitions that aren't as demanding. Um, but it also gives you perspective, if you will, because whenever you're bringing and, you, and you're able to like swim in venues that big in front of so many people, uh, whenever you have meets like nationals, for example, it helps you calm down, it helps you put things into perspective, and it helps you perform in a lot more calm state of mind as well. Have kind of a been there, done that type of thing. Been there, done that type of thing, exactly. Now, what made you decide to come to Missouri S&T? Um, whenever I was looking for a college, it was a little bit different for me, being able to like find universities, considering that I wasn't in the U.S. at the time. I had to do a lot of the research for myself and be able to like put myself out there to be able to get recruited. Um, and my older brother actually swam for Drury, which is really close. So being able to like look for a school that had a really, really good, you know, engineering program as well as a STEM, you know, division was really important for me because as far as, you know, my career goes at the end of the day, swimming is not going to pay the bills, a good degree will. And that's what I heard a lot about the school, a degree from the school weighs a lot. And I really liked the team, uh, the swim team in this school, uh, as well as talking to Coach Grooms. He showed a lot of interest. He showed a lot of, you know, want in me being in his team, and he showed a lot of care. And I was really appreciative of that, as well as be able to see that he meant business whenever he was talking about his swimming season. So that was also really important for me coming in. Let's talk about the academic side and all that, and your major, and why you decided to go in the route you did. Um, so right now I'm majoring in computer science. I initially started as a chemical engineer, but then during my freshman year, I took a programming class at C++, and that for me was a game changer. It, it is a very tedious, you know, major, because you have a lot of, you know, assignments and projects that you have to work on, but it's something that's really rewarding in the sense that every time that you do something, an assignment, it's kind of like a creation of your own, as opposed to just solving problems with formulas and being able to reach a solution. You're trying to work the solution out for yourself, and for me, computer science has always been a passion of mine because I was always, I always grew up, you know, loving, you know, just computers and everything else, as well as thinking in that type of recursive manner, if you want to call it that. But it was always really enticing to me to be able to like get into computer science and be able to learn uh, programming um, as well as game development, which is something that has been a passion of mine for so long. But um, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to, you know, in computer science.
we'll get back to that here in a moment, yeah. but you uh, went to a bilingual school in yeah. Honduras. That's correct. How much did that help you, you know, as now transitioning to the United States, but maybe in the major you're in right now, and maybe what you could do going forward with that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people ask me if I was born in the U.S. or raised in the U.S., and that is gratefully due to, like, the fact that I was born and raised in, in such a bilingual environment, if you want to call it that. Both my parents are English speakers, and I was able to, you know, thankfully participate in a very American-oriented program, which my school offered back home, which also led me into, like, not have as much of a culture shock as other people or other internationals might have whenever they're, you know, visiting the United States. So I was really prepared on not only what the academics were going to be or what the school program was going to be, but as well as the American culture and being able to, like, adjust a lot easier. That was also a great part of what I can attribute to my school back home. Now, upon graduation, what kind of are your plans right there for your future? Um, being an international student, I have a lot of like options, if you want to call it that, because a lot of people ask me if I want to stay in the U.S., but I'm not really sure. It's definitely something that I'm looking into, as well as, of course, as any other graduate, I'm trying to get a job right after graduation. You know, you have to pay the bills. Um, but I've always, you know, wondered and thought to myself that I probably want to like go outside of Honduras. But the more I grow and the more I learn, it also gives me perspective into thinking that I might be able to bring some of the things that I learn, as well as the talent that I'm able to like pick up on most of these programs and take it back home to be able to like help my country, if you want to call it that, in advancing in a lot of areas such as computer science, which you know third world countries are not really advanced in. Um, but that would be an honor for me. And it's been something that's been really changed throughout my life. And I feel like up until recently, I've been giving that idea a lot more thought and consideration as well. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, certainly thank you for your time this morning, Marco, and good luck this season. Thank you.